This didn't happen, and thus the IPCC multiplier does not backtest too well. The IPCC response to this dilemma is that they say global temperature is being masked by another byproduct of fossil fuel burning, namely sulfate aerosols. They have an overall cooling effect because they prevent incoming solar rays from reaching the Earth's surface. However, this is a very debatable effect, as sulfates are short-lived and localized. Most sulfates are released in the industrial northern hemisphere, but most global warming is also seen there. Shouldn't it be the opposite way around if this cooling effect were significant? Catastrophic global warming relies upon the hypothetical 2.5 multiplier of CO2. By looking at historical temperatures, we find that the mass doesn't add up, and thus the existence of this positive feedback is tenuous at best. Global warming theory predicts a tropical hotspot of warming 10 kilometers above the surface, the altitude of most clouds. However, the observed temperatures in the atmosphere over a 25 year period were significantly lower. Not only was there no hotspot in the skies, but also the models never predicted the last 10 years of global cooling. It's true to say that 25 years is a relatively short time when it comes to climate change and the complex plethora of forces that drive temperature can mask each other. Maybe there is global sulfate cooling masking an overall upward temperature trend. Perhaps, but unlikely. Climate models, the main evidence for global warming, have not had much luck in predicting temperatures thus far, and must currently be approached with caution. Climate models claim CO2 is a powerful driver of temperature. What does the historical record say? As you delve further into the past, data quality deteriorates. However, the generally accepted correlation between CO2 and temperature over the past 600 million years paints an interesting picture of how our planet has a large variability in atmospheric conditions, but rarely catastrophic to life. Fossil fuel burning has perhaps led to the highest atmospheric CO2 concentration in 600,000 years, 380 parts per million. But is this abnormal? Is this a cause for concern? Probably not. For a long-term perspective, we are currently in a relative cool phase with very low CO2. However, life is used to warmer conditions with much higher CO2 levels. Not only is 380 parts per million a relatively low level, but the correlation between CO2 and temperature is relatively weak in the long term. For instance, in the Ice Age 450 million years ago, CO2 was not low as expected by some, but actually 15 times higher than now. Once you put things into historical perspective, the prospective seems a lot rosier. In the third IPCC report, Michael Mann put forward the famous hockey stick graph. This graph created great ripples within the global community, was often cited and used to demonstrate that catastrophic global warming was on the horizon. He claimed that the last half century was the warmest in 1300 years and was not within natural variation. However, his data source, Tree Rings of Bristlecone Pines, has been largely discredited since. He used comparative tree ring widths as a proxy for global temperature. Firstly, this is a single localized data set. Secondly, and perhaps more significantly, tree rings are only very poorly correlated to temperature. More often than not, the limiting factor to plant growth is water availability, not temperature. And with the bristlecone pines, this is particularly true. The pines evidence has been thoroughly chipped away. Does that imply that the concept of catastrophic global warming should be also? If you want to find out how temperatures varied over the past few thousand years, you need go no further than a study like Lowell's in 2007. His results have been replicated many times over, and he himself used 18 different globally distributed data sets which tightly agreed with each other. This gives us a large confidence in his findings, findings which agree with all the anecdotal evidence we have as well. Instead of a flat line of low temperature, as proposed by Michael Mann over the past millennium, there have been significant changes. During the medieval warm period, Vikings under Eric the Red were able to colonize a green and fertile land, Greenland. Five hundred years later, they were completely driven out by the worsening cold of the Little Ice Age. 
This cold spell ended in the early 1800s, so did the annual London Frost Fairs, as the world began warming, as it has ever since. So, today is not particularly warm. It's still cooler than the Middle Ages, and in addition, and perhaps most importantly, the current warming predates any industrialization by a few hundred years. Since the Industrial Revolution, both temperature and CO2 have risen somewhat. True. But by looking at the past 1,000 years or so, we can see that this temperature change is within natural variation and a continuance of a trend that began 200 years before man started churning out the CO2. If you look more closely at just the past 100 years, the correlation between temperature and CO2 is not as close as one may think. Much of the 0.6 degrees of warming occurred in the first half of the 20th century, but CO2 emissions were still minor then. During the post-war boom of the 40s to the 50s, when you would have expected significant global warming due to CO2, the reverse happened. Temperatures dropped. You could say that there were other extraneous factors that led to this discontinuity in global warming. Some claim sulfate cooling, but this is largely discredited and no other factors have been proposed. So, man-made CO2 output does not appear to correlate well to temperature over the past century. By all accounts, whether it be service stations, satellites, or by balloons, global warming has stopped over the past decade. There has been global warming for the past century, but its growth has stalled since 98 in the face of the highest ever output of CO2. Some would say that this is just a natural variation masking the prevailing CO2 effect, and it is too soon to read anything into it. However, many skeptics would perhaps suggest that this downturn is perfectly explicable and demonstrates where the real driving force of the global climate is. It is the result of the combined forces of the well-documented alternative drivers of global temperature, the sun and the sea. The current cooling is perhaps due both to the oceans going into a well-predicted cooling phase, for example, La Nina arriving in the Pacific, and due to ultra-low sunspot activity. In the face of the highest man-made CO2 output in history, global temperatures have dropped over the last decade, not risen as predicted by the climate models. Whether this is a temporary blip or not, none of the climate models relied on by the IPCC forecast this. The ice is becoming too weak to support a male polar bear. Each year, as the climate warms, the Arctic holds less ice. This is a disaster for polar bears. Without its solid platform, they can't hunt the seals they need in order to survive. This may be a glimpse of the unstable future faced by this magnificent creature. We are constantly being confronted with disturbing images of Mother Nature in strife, such as drowning polar bears. However, many studies show that these natural disasters are simply not happening. If anything, the planet is becoming less stormy, more fertile, and more habitable for both plants and animals. And by the way, polar bear populations are rising. Is the planet in strife? Is Mother Nature warning us that we are mishandling her and setting her on a course of catastrophic climate change? Most people agree that we could always do a better job of managing our environment. However, the question we pose here is whether CO2 production is leading to environmental disaster. There is very little evidence that the current warming trend has adversely affected the planet's environment. Quite the contrary, in fact. Despite the spiel often spun to us that there are more hurricanes, more floods, and more droughts of biblical proportions on their way, warming is good, cooling is bad. The continuous and stable warming of the last 300 years is saving lives and making us more prosperous. Let's look at the evidence. For the past 100 years, has there been a rise in hurricanes? No. More droughts? No. More melting glaciers? Yes, but this started well before man's industrialization, and thus is natural, not man-made. Likewise, has there been melting of the North Pole ice? Yes, 
But this trend is also pre-industrial, therefore also natural. 